we're back for another look at fun tools and I'm sure a lot of you are going to be familiar with these two things but I wanted to go over some things uh, maybe you aren't familiar with them <laughs> for instance I was not familiar with one of these deals until a customer of mine said hey you know I'm using this thing and I have found it to be really useful so maybe you're not aware of these things so the two things I want to look at are the Diderio Humida Pack. Um, and this is a system. We'll get it out here in just a second. This is a system that is supposed to stabilize your humidity. Now, I personally am a big fan of. I personally am a big fan of simple things. And uh, for decades, decades, since 1988, 89, I have used. A sponge in a Ziploc bag is my humidifier. And I have a video on this. It's making a homemade humidifier. It's got holes punched in it here. You put a good kitchen sponge in here, not a plastic sponge. An Ocello genuine actual sponge. Squeeze it out. Drop it in your case. Drop it in your guitar. Whatever you want to do. I just drop it right straight in the guitar a lot of times. Because it's not going to leak. It's a good sponge. However... What happens if you're gone for a week or two? Those sponges here in northern New Mexico, I'm at elevation of 8,500 feet elevation right now. And let me tell you what, in the winter, it gets dry. Um, that sponge will last for about three days in a guitar, and then it's dry. So what do you do? I've got some customers' guitars here, and I might be gone for a week from this place, and I'll be in the other place, and, and vice versa and then I'm back here and those guitars are over there so I need a system that is more stable and more long term therefore being a dead area dealer um, I get those strings and everything at dealer cost and put on customers guitars I decided to finally try one of these things and my objections to these things are twofold they're expensive um, they cost 15 bucks a deal and you know it's not a big deal but if you got six guitars 10 guitars, you know, you're looking at 150 bucks for 10 guitars every two or three months. How long do they last? Three months? Two months? You know, you're looking at some money over the over the course of a year. Um, and, you know, they're not all my guitars. They're customers' guitars. But I might have six to ten customers' guitars at any, at any given time. So, yeah, I don't. But if but I've got a couple of guitars that really need to be humidified to know that uh, D45 Authentic, you know? That's a pretty valuable guitar, um, things like that. So I wanted to try these out. So this is the first thing we're going to look at, and in just a minute I'm going to discuss the problems that these have, and we're going to look at the effectiveness of it. But the second thing I want to show you, I'm going to open up my guitar case here, and this is my Pro OMD which I'm using as a test model here because there was no way I was going to drop one of those um, one of those in a customer's D45 authentic, you know? The second thing I use is this. And this is the one that I didn't know about until my, until my customer friend told me about it. It's a Govi hygrometer. And the great thing about this is they make two kinds of models. They make two models. One of them is Bluetooth, and the other one is Wi-Fi. And the, and the Wi-Fi one runs on Bluetooth too, but the Wi-Fi one is great because I can check my humidity from wherever I am. It's got an app, and it goes on to that. And as long as I can log into that Wi-Fi thing, which I can, I can get record of the humidity. The other really nice thing about this thing is what I just said is it keeps a record of the humidity and that um, is really interesting for me because let's say I get back here and I have discovered that my sponge went dry. Well I can log into the GoV and I can see when did the sponge go dry? Did it go dry four days ago? Do I need to pick up the humidity or did it go dry last night? You know? So I'm going to put some screenshots up here of the record of this thing. And what we're going to do, the reason we're going to look at the Govee 
is because I put it in the cache with the humidity pack and so I'm going to document how steady the humidity pack kept the humidity. So I'm going to pop some of the screenshots up here right now and I want you to see how steady that humidity pack kept the humidity in the cache and let me tell you, it did a great job. There's several versions of these things and this one is the the main 10. So they've got several versions of them. Some of them will kick the humidity up. Some of them will dry the humidity out. This is the maintain, and it's supposed to maintain at 45 to 50% RH. So we will look at the screenshots and see how good of a job it did at 45 to 50% RH. Let me emphasize one more time that just because you keep your guitar at 45 to 50% RH, does not necessarily mean that's where that guitar wants to be. I have another video here on learning how to read your guitar and you really should go watch that video because there are some guitars that have been kept in very humid environments and you know I used to work on guitars from Hong Kong and Thailand and I still work on some from Hawaii places where the humidity is sky high all the time those guitars, once exposed to a long term of humidity, need to be kept at a higher humidity. Um, and I explain all that in the other video about how to read your guitar. So it's not enough to just 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 throw the guitar into 50% humidity. That's a nice average. But some guitars do better on the on the low end of the spectrum, 35 percent humidity. Some guitars do better on the high end of the spectrum at 60, 65 percent humidity. You need to learn to read your guitar, okay? Having said all that, let's look at the data that I got from the GoV and I'm going to plug that in here right now. Alright, now, problems with the humidity pack. Let's look at one in the guitar first of all. Here's your guitar and this is the part that hangs into the guitar and it's a little little saddle bag and it's got two packs in it. You drop it over here, you drop it over the strings and the second pack, which is actually the third pack because there's two of them inside the guitar, but the other one is it just a thin single and it goes up into the headstock area all right that all sounds good <laughs> but I have had customers guitars come in with these humidity packs in them and they're leaking well that's bad news because you shouldn't want one of these leaking in um, a D45 authentic you don't want them leaking in a pre-war Martin D28 the holy grail that I reviewed a little while ago you don't really want them, I don't want them leaking in my Pru, you know, this is my, this is my number two guitar and, and number one's over there, but I don't want them leaking anywhere. So the, the thing that I'm looking into is why do they leak? And I, uh, we're going to probably pop that in right now. I recorded an earlier session on why these things leak and I've got some humidity packs that are leaking. So let's pop that in here right now. Let's take a look at a, at a leaking humidity pack and see if we can figure out possibly why they might be leaking. And I will say that I am not sure why they leak. And so I'm doing some research into this is to find out what the problems are. But just real quick to the point, what I have, what I think is that number one, all the packages that I have seen that are leaking are not in the bags. They're, they're, they're just thrown into the case and a lot of times they're up into the headstock and they're not in the bags. The second thing I think is that maybe the guitar or the situation was over humidified or under humidified to begin with. It says very clearly on the instructions on the maintain that you need to get the guitar to that situation first. And if you don't do that, I think you might be overloading the humidity pack. So if you go in with too much humidity, it's trying to pull the humidity out and it can't handle that much humidity and it overloads and blows. Uh, vice versa, if it's too dry going in there, 
it tries to put too much over here. In other words, you're overloading the humidity packs. But I don't know for sure. I'm researching. I'm just presenting this right now as a caution to be careful. <laughs> and I don't know if I trust these fully yet um, or what I might do to prevent this. I think, I think if they're in this little pouch here, even if they leak, they're really not going to go anywhere because the one that I took apart that you're going to see at the end of this video didn't really leak. It just had a moist gel that if it was touching something, yeah, that'd be bad news. But in the case that it wasn't touching, I don't know it would be bad. So if it's suspended in this package and I'm feeling these to see if they're leaking here, and they're not leaking, they're just in there pretty good. So I think I would trust them if they were inside the packages and you're using them like they're supposed to be used. The other thing that I think I would do is if I was relying on one of these for long-term use, I think I would store the guitar like this so that the pack is actually hanging down so that if it leaks it goes down into the package whereas if you do it like this and it leaks you could be touching the rim of the guitar right here you see the pack hangs down that way I would store the guitar on its back so that this hangs down um, I don't know but I do know from the GoV graphics that we looked at that they do a really good job of maintaining that even temperature. That is the best uh, and most consistent maintaining of temperature that I have seen in humidity since I've been using these things. So, I like them. So, but I like them especially in combination with these Govi deals. These are really good. So, try these out see what you think. Okay? If you have any experience with the leaking Humidity packs, let me know because I'm real curious about this. All right, here's a humidity pack that I cut open, and this is one of those that was wet. Like this one, here it is, right here. You can see this side is light tan and this side is dark. So, this one, for whatever reason, was leaking. Leaking is not the right word for this. It, uh, it, you know, it's wet right now, but it's not dripping water or anything like that. Um, it is damp, and I've got gloves on because I don't, I don't want to touch this stuff. Anyway, I cut one open, and this is what it looks like. First of all, there was a pretty good barrier inside the package. So even though it's wet like this, it, like I said, it's actually not dripping. It's just wet. And so once again, I think if it's inside the bag the black bag that it's supposed to be and that's also lined with something and so if this happens and it's inside that black bag I think you're pretty safe and if you know otherwise you let me know if anybody knows anyway I cut it open here's what we have and we have very hard salts right here um, it's almost like a crystal I mean I'm trying to you know I did this kind of thing in organic chemistry way back when 50 years ago <laughs> <laughs> and I remember seeing this sort of thing. Um, anyway, it's really, really hard. You gotta go in there and break it up. And this is not what it's supposed to be like at all. It's, the the fresh packages are soft, you know, and pliable, almost like a gel. Um, and this was this did have some gel sections when I first cut it. Maybe we can cut this one open too. But over in the corner, this is what you have is a hardness. And so I really highly suspect. But this is just absorbed too much water. Uh, probably was over humidified in the guitar. So I'm going to toss this out of the way. Let's go ahead and cut this one open. I think it, yeah, it is open. Yeah, I'm sorry. I did cut it open. To be honest with you, I had to actually pull these out of the trash because I videotaped this earlier and I lost the... Uh, I lost the footage and so here's a hard one again really hard look at that at that point then it's not going to absorb moisture anymore and even though the expiration date on this was good um you know something's happening there so 
How bad is absorbing too much water? You're adding, you're adding humidity and trying to rely on these things. That's my guess. So I'm gonna keep using them for a little while and I'll see how they work for me. And, you know, I suspect that those leaking ones are, are user error. If I find out more information, I'll be talking about them. In the meantime, I'm gonna use them because they did a really, really good job of keeping that humidity nice and level. And especially on a guitar that I'm not gonna deal with every day. Guitars that I'm gonna leave either here or with the other shop and I'm not gonna see them for a week, maybe two weeks, and I want the humidity to stay level. So the combination of the um, humidipax and the Govi hygrometers looks like a pretty good deal. I'm still gonna keep sponges around though for quick humidifications. You know, you get a dry guitar, you need to be able to humidify. That's not what these um, humidipax do, not these, these are the maintainers. So, you know, I'm always going to have those sponges around. And if I was able to watch the guitar every two or three days, then I would definitely just keep using sponges. Um, but if you look at the charts, you know, you can see that the humidity packs really kept it stable. So, all right, let's get this done with. See you later.